Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to the channel. You know where you at. You know where you at. But it's not a segment of why you telling my business. Don't be telling my business. We're going to talk about Portia Williams' book. <coughs> the Pursuit of Portia. How I Grew Into My Power and My Purpose. Okay. This is what she's given us. And this is true tea. This is not a fictional book. She says this is her biography and autobiography. So everything that I am spitting to you on my show, on my channel, is definitely truth. This is Portia's truth. And I'm telling you, it's something else. She told me in non-essential ways that uh, chapter one was about her mama trying to be an astute businesswoman, but basically fell flat on her face now in chapter two she telling me she admired her daddy and wants to be like him but she is telling me he's a hoe okay so we got a business woman as a mother as a flop and now in chapter two she calling her dad a hoe okay and an abuser mentally abusing but she said she loved him y'all she says she loved them. So why don't we just get right on into it, honey? We're going to get right on into it. She pretty much um, glosses over about her dad dying when she was 16 years old. And Lauren uh, being, I guess, 10 at the time. And she wasn't having it. You know how most people are there at funerals. They ain't got time to be sitting up in no church, no three and four hours, trying to celebrate the life of someone who's deceased and... People getting up there telling uh, lies on the microphone about what they did, this, that, and the third. And, you know, it's just too much. I kind of believe that COVID came at a good time because it stopped a lot of people from going in the church telling lies on the deceased one. Now they're just doing it at the grave side, quick, fast, in a hurry. And people don't have to listen to all that. Because I say give the people their roses, their praises, their adornments when they're living. When it matters versus trying to tell them all this stuff when they did and gone. That is fruitful. I mean fruitless and vile in my opinion. Tell somebody you love them now. Don't tell them when you're on your deathbed and stuff of that kind of nature. That's just piss poor in my book. Piss poor. Fraudulent foolish fuckery <coughs> and fakeness going on. Okay. But for sure, like I said, she goes through telling you know how they mourned her dad or their dad and how her dad was deemed so uh righteous and so uh enamored you know around certain people and in a sense she was basically saying that she wanted to be just like her dad okay she talks about all these red roses just draping the um the church that he was being buried or laid to rest in it was israel baptist church here in atlanta um people spoke at a funeral um notoriety type people you know reverend jesse jackson dick gregory mayor bill campbell and uh affluent people such as that okay but if anybody know the whole scene is a bunch of mess when it comes to those civil rights leaders uh in their personal lives because i heard and i'm just saying it i heard now it was widely known in these streets okay that even Martin Luther king was a playboy out there but as we know coretta scott, coretta scott king stood by her man uh no matter what came or whatever uh if it was done that way it wasn't done where people would see it and go out there and publicize it and we did have media outlets then that they could have definitely uh, done so. But she was just so respectful. Even though her husband was a dog too. Going around him laying low and spreading it wide for all these women. I heard Aretha Franklin was one of them. I'm just saying. Like, well, hey, I just heard it now. Uh, but uh, yeah. And I know I personally met Coretta Scott King. Uh, very nice lady. Very... Uh, educated just her whole aura and essence was just like oh i want to be like her you know what i'm saying not like her personal ways but her characteristics her demeanor and how she gives the correct optics for p 
people when she's out in public. And what she do behind them closed doors, that's her business. You know what I'm saying? Hell, she could have been going with one of, another service right later. You'll never know. I think Andrew Young took fancy to her. And they were trying to portray something up with them after his wife had died and all this stuff. Them trying to get together. But she probably knew. He ran in that same pack her husband ran in. He was a dog too. But anyway, just to give you one-ups on her, that was a true lady of the civil rights movement. Uh, trying to be the backbone of her husband, being the forefront out there, Martin Luther King, trying to get us from the back door to the front door. So, uh, but you never heard anything. That's what I'm saying. Coretta Scott King kept her mouth closed. She very, she did very limited interviews and this thing, this that, and the third, and she kept her children out of mess. Okay. Now, what Diane was trying to do, I don't know, because it seemed like. Mama Liz, or uh, Auntie Liz, uh, the daughter of Jose Williams, Portia's uh, aunt, um, she didn't like Portia. She didn't like Diane. She probably saw Diane as an opportunist, and she wasn't here for her. And she probably felt the same thing about Lauren's mom, too. Because, you know, when people are that high up, or they think they that high up in society... They tend to look down on you and your and while they on their chariot or they throne. If you ain't coming from a good stock or they feel you can help with the movement back then or you wasn't deemed trustworthy to be around that circle, then they ain't have nothing to do with you pretty much. You know what I'm saying? So I can see the backlash Porsche probably got or felt that energy coming from that side of the family because they thought they was the shit in Atlanta when they really weren't. They really weren't the shit. Okay, but people knew who they were because they were being publicized or always with their dad when it came to speaking in churches about, you know, the black movement and how um, they wanted all black people to come together, boycott the bus lines and this, that, and the third. And hence of the preparation plans they were holding for different marches they were going to be doing out there in the community here in Atlanta and around the Bible Belt section. Okay. They were getting around. And that's loosely what I'm saying. It. They were handling business, but they were getting around with other women that weren't their wives. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm pretty sure Juanita, which is uh, Reverend... Uh, Jose Williams, her grandfather, she had some issues with his, meaning Jose Williams, philandering ways, too, because I met him personally, too. Uh, I don't know if I told y'all that. I'm pretty sure I did in one of my past videos. He felt privileged. He, he had that little, like, you know, white people go around him. Not all white people, but some people go with that privilege uh, deal. He felt he was privileged because he was part of the civil rights movement. And every time he came to Kentucky Fried Chicken... On Glenwood Road, it's no longer there now, but it was on Glenwood Road, popular spot for people to get their KLC and the Gator. Uh, he felt that we needed to give him his food free. I'm like, what entitlement are you talking about? And, you know, like free? I gotta pay for my food. You know, with, with I didn't have to pay my food once I was working there, but when I had to come up here, and I thought I was important. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But he felt that, he, he, you know, did you know? He even asked me, do you know who I am? I like, yeah, you look familiar. I think you're Jose Williams. He said, yeah, that's right. He would drive around with his Cadillac. Girl, he was drunk as a skunk. And he was known in Atlanta to be a drunk as a skunk person, too. Okay, I don't know if his demons or his, uh, his uh, things he had done in his past was getting to him. Or he felt lesser than or whatever. But that he was a drinker, a drunk. Okay. So, to catch him in those rare moments where he was coherent was a jewel. Okay. But the man was smart now. He he was a uh, college graduate. I think the love or the, uh, um, we call it career choice he had at, the, at one time was he's a chemist. So, he was real good. That's why I said, I know Portia got these genes in her. Why she did not foster herself to do better. I mean, come on now, stardom, light, that's all you wanted. But again, at two or three years old, this is what she was expressing. She loved that glamorous life and, and the luxury life and the being around the who's who and all that. And this was at a very young age, how she said two or three years old. But I don't even remember 
Me even sucking my bottle of my pacifier at two or three years old. Or trying to give up, get up my bottle, you know, to drink from a sippy cup or whatever. So I don't know how she is amazingly remembering these things at two and three years old. But this is how she's doing. And it's very confusing with this book. Because sometimes you think if she's 16 years old when she's reflecting back on past experiences. But the child be talking about she, she was two and three years old. I'm like, who telling you this? Because you cannot remember this, okay? But, yeah, Portia's dad's out of the family, they felt they were the it people. And evidently, they didn't see Diane and her mother as the it factor. So, basically, they tossed them to a side. And when they had to bring them uh, out where people would know who they were or whatnot, that's when they did it. Other than that, they didn't uh, mince uh, any... <sighs> uh, growth or trying to enlist those two kids that their brother had with diane to teach them the ways of how to live life and this that and the third and since you are part of the williams clan you must conduct yourself accordingly because people are out there to find the least respectable thing about you to put you in a spotlight where they're gonna put Ooh, Jose Williams children, you know, involved in this, that, and the third. When nobody really was checking for Jose Williams and his clan. Not really. All the only reason why Jose came so prevalent is when he started his um, non-profit organization, Jose Williams Feed the Hungry. And that's how he came to be really um, uh, known in Atlanta. Other than being a groupie or cohort of Dr. Martin Luther King and his mission and his movement he was trying to do for um, black lives okay or minority lives but no he, he that family wasn't there the only person that was cooking with gas up him was um Jesse well Martin Luther King and his children and um I would say Jesse Jackson but nah, I ain't even gonna go there cause his kids had some problems too but I never really heard anything and that's because I believe they came from good stock on their mother's side because again Martin Luther King family they were like reluctant to take anybody in or they made sure that their children were definitely going to be you know uh, dealing with the right set of people the right breed the right you know brand uh upscale type people so uh i'm sure it wasn't a bad deal when Martin Luther king chose coretta king as his partner in life and uh, you know she came because she was educated herself she was uh well liked in her community so it was like a match made in heaven but um uh, the the horse and, and and manure they trying to throw us a Porsche trying to throw us that her uh dad side of the family was the it factor that's not true at all and then you can look at your own history to see what really part her grandfather played in and where his notoriety came from um uh, being it was his own non-profit organization with feeding the hungry people out there in atlanta versus being a part of the movement Okay, but yeah, her granddaddy really was a drunk. He was a loud mouth and he expected privileges of who he was and not, you know, understanding that just because you are this type of person, we still have a business to run. And yeah, it is the white man's business, but we can't be giving you no free chicken every time you want to come around here. Are you going to be the security guard around here too? Because we used to um, also feed... Um, um, the Atlanta Police uh, Department, because they used to come always uh, eat in our establishment on Glenwood. And they used to, you know, when you have a lot of police presence around, a lot of things are not going to happen. As far as uh, crime and people wanting to commit crime at certain businesses. So, that was one of the security things that my boss, Reginald Hendricks, okay, a uh, very good boss, taught me a lot. Uh, told me I need to get out the industry because I have just too many feelings uh, for people and <laughs> I need to be sitting behind a desk somewhere. <laughs> so he was really like strong on me going to college, doing something, you know, and, and not being um, in a hard working type profession such as that. Because, you no, know, he and that, he was kind of like a father figure to me as well. And I, I really appreciated him and his endeavors of trying to make me a better person and learning the uh things about uh, handling somebody else's business and their money and trying to make a living off of it as well but that was just my uh sidebar 
but going back because i was just trying to give you a little idea of what portia's uh dad's side of the family was about and then when she's in this chapter two telling me how he treated her but yet she still loved him was a false sense of love and i think uh diane could have did a better job with things because in this same chapter she goes in to talk about how her dad not once not twice but several times cheated on miss diane and diane got so upset one day and again Portia's giving it to us from a two year two to three year old perspective because she's saying her mama got mad one day they got in the car didn't know where they were going uh but she noticed the building that they were um driving up to which is her dad's building he had a janitorial service that made chemical compounds um and he sold them to major retailers she put in the book home depot and it could have been some other entities as well but he had a janitorial cleaning service that he was making his money in for the family but evidently i don't know how diane found out that her husband was cheating on her but she had got tired of the bull and she went up on the man's job <laughs> or that company he owned and she told into him honey and how portia uh displays in the book she was watching people come out their offices or peeking out their offices just to get a glimpse of a hear earshot of what was going on because they probably knew that uh portia dad was a dog was a true canine going around him screwing everything that had an asshole uh to penetrate and you know they just wanted to know how long diane's gonna keep put up with the foolishness but um when just to go back a little bit uh evidently lauren didn't care about none of the civil rights people either because portia expressed that jesse uh reverend jesse jackson uh attended the funeral of her uh deceased dad and he kissed lauren on the forehead and it seems like that disturbed lauren you know like why are you kissing me on the forehead i don't want your, your touch like that and i just thought that was kind of weird too unless you were really into their family and i don't see that jesse jackson was probably coming over to uh portia's mama's house trying to do anything special for her because his colleague wasn't acting right or his colleague's son wasn't acting right because she didn't say just Jackson was very much so a part of their life and da 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 da. I understood, understood, didn't understand why Jess would find it okay to kiss a child on top of the head. You know what I'm saying? Or the forehead at that. That's too much in her personal space. And Miss Diane should have checked him for that. Because, you know, pedophilia just don't run through the white folks' um, uh, race. It runs through everybody's race. And the black race know they have a good head on trying to hide stuff and put it under the, the covers of the dirt. Or, you know, out where we ain't talking about this subject. It may have happened, may not happen, whatever. But we ain't talking about it. But we're going to try to keep that person away from you. That's how it was done in the black family. Or at least the families that I knew about that that kind of stuff happened. Because my mom, she ain't like us sitting on nobody's, no man's lap. <coughs> um being too close to uh one of their boyfriends or whatnot that would come over she, she mama didn't play that mess honey and my grandmama which is my mama's mama didn't play it either child she was one of them parents that sat down you grown as hell in your 30s and 40s and you have somebody come over to visit you a suit or you know a maid or whatnot and my grandma sat there right in the same room like uh yeah i'm gonna do what y'all want to do but i'm gonna keep an eye on my daughter who you trying to be cozying up with and i'm keeping uh, an eye on my grandchildren too so you can sit here long. i can wait you out you'll be you'll be gone <laughs> and i used to look and see when my mama had suitors come over after she had divorced my dad uh she would definitely do that <laughs> and i was like oh at the time i didn't know it was caught blocking but uh i was sitting last sometimes when i think about it that my mom ain't have a chance of trying to find another husband since my grandmama. She be like, uh-uh, one marriage, that's it, honey. You ain't getting a second chance. Now I'm my grandkids. So it was it was very entertaining. Uh then we talk about um uh, let me see. She was talking about um how well the people that were speaking over her daddy's uh casket she was mostly 
uh, worried about being late to her dad's funeral. She told us she was wearing this little black, nice dress, uh, silk dress with the silk scarf going around it and this, that, and the third. And then she was saying that, you know, most black families, cause I can't speak of on any other religion, you know, too much because I only really hung around my race, okay, when I was young and, um, all that jazz okay i don't understand why they always kept the funeral um casket open the entire time of the ceremony until it was like the benediction time but that that did happen a lot and you know a lot of people just can't take that i mean if you're gonna come in stroll the first part of the uh programming uh with the proceedings of you know talking over the deceased loved one you know, make it how they make it now. You know, you have a room to go view it. But once that casket is brought in to start the services, it's closed. You know, maybe we'll open it back up for you prior to us putting them in the ground. Or maybe we can open it up at the ground, uh, the grave site or whatnot. But it, it is a little bit too much. Especially if a person died unexpectedly. Or, uh, you know, they weren't like on their deathbed already or succumb to a terminal illness and they really had checked out brain wise and it wasn't then like that but like something like a car accident and I'm not saying they were disfigured or anything but you just don't want to look at somebody like that because it kind of creeps you out and i kind of get creeped out when people take pictures uh at the funeral i'm like you already have your program you know what i'm saying that should be enough you don't want to see somebody how they actually die unless they are like peacefully s looking like they're sleeping you know, but if it's looking kind of rough and stuff like that, you don't want that. You don't want that image. You want the image that when they were being vital and and, and had full of life in them. You want those memories. But you know, to each his own. But she was talking about how Lauren. She sat behind Lauren's mom. I guess the first pew was filled with the present wife and her children, and then you probably had the mother of that child. Uh, meaning Jose Williams' uh, mother, Juanita, was there on that front bench. And then, for some reason, Portia felt some kind of way that she had to sit behind them. So, I'm like, damn, Portia, you were really kind of rude. You, you you really thought you was the it be all and shit and all that kind of stuff. Well, guess what? Um, You weren't married. Or your mom wasn't married to your dad at the time when he passed. He had already been married, remarried, okay? And... <laughs> Miss uh, Lisa was going to keep him. Even though you told us in this uh, chapter 2. He cheated out on Lisa too. And you told Lisa about it. And I'm like girl. Were you trying to like really break everybody's spirits? I'm sure Lisa knew he was a cheater. But we as women. We got to do better about ourselves. We got to say. We ain't dealing with you if you cheat. Because if you cheat once. You cheat twice. You cheat three times more. And it just be a hot mess. And that happened with your mom. From what you're telling us. He cheated several times on your mom. And she finally, finally figured out. No nah, I'm not going to keep fooling with this turd. I'm going to get rid of him. Let Lisa handle those problems now. Where she had to sit up and wonder where he at. And when he come home. He got an attitude. And want to start a little bit fights here and there. Now I give that to her. So Lisa put up with. Meaning. um, What's her name? Lawrence um, mom. Put up with the mess that uh mr uh jose uh the third well the second was putting out okay so he was a hoe he was a track star he was a runner okay but portia inevitably told her that he cheated and the daddy punished her in a very mental severe way and we'll get to that soon but going back to the casket deal somehow Portia was sitting up in the back in the back pew behind Miss Lisa and she heard Miss Lisa cry out or say out loudly can y'all close the casket I was like okay but she could express real well that it seems like Lauren was having a hard time seeing her dad and she was getting agitated you know how most kids are they really figure out that their person that they love, meaning her dad, wasn't coming back. Because he was up in that, that casket. One saying nothing. One trying to harm a tune or nothing. So she knew that her dad was gone from what her parents had told her. And what she kind of had put two and two together and witnessed herself. 
that um yeah they had gone and she didn't want to be there no more she just was acting up just how children do so i understood that but i understood the resentment that portia wasn't up front with uh what she, with what she felt she needed to be at doing those uh funeral proceedings okay and then of course you know you got the speakers that I always like to come and say things over a deceased body and um portia was definitely uh very proud of her dad's features she goes in to say um he was a, a truly average height black man, which he really meant he stood five feet to nine. Uh, my dad was like me in many ways. He was attractive. He was flashy. The type of guy who walked in a room and made you wonder, who is that? Our family has really bad vision. So, you always, so he always had to have glasses on. But it's just the point that Portia was saying that, oh, Lord. You know, my guy, my dad was pretty, and I seen him pretty. I mean, he ain't no ugly man, but he ain't no cute man either. Uh, from the pictures that I were able to view on Instagram or um, we call it Google when you Google her family's um dad's name, that, that weird picture comes up with him uh having the glasses and i think they were transitionals we know as now when you you know out in the sunlight it covers it like shade and then when you come uh it has a little tint to it to make it look like he's wearing sunglasses and then when he gets inside they really be black which i never understood that because i'm like he should have just had two pair of shades uh, one pair of shades and one pair of glasses but who am i who am i he thought he was the shit diane thought he was the shit and lisa thought he was the shit and guess what he shitted on both of them because he cheated on them okay but she was giving her dad all this high notoriety all this high praise um and the people that were speaking over him um were saying you know how you know he was and, and who his dad was which they're saying dr martin the king uh um, Jose, her grandfather, her dad's dad, was his chief field lieutenant. Lieutenant, And, you know, she talks about um, he was a part of the Southern Christ Christian Leadership Conference that Dr. King was, um, that was his baby. And basically what he was establishing with the growth and the movement uh, for black people uh, of color. <coughs> lives and, and, and making sure they had a seat at the front table as well instead of going through the back doors and different organizations and things of that nature uh sitting on the back of the bus and all like that he wanted everybody to be equal so um she was saying that her dad dad was a part of that trying to give him some notoriety as well but again like i said he was muchly known as uh starting the organization feed the hungry here in atlanta uh, then she goes on to talk about her grandmother, which was her grandfather's wife, Juanita, and her dad's mom. Uh, she was educated as well. She was the first, uh, she was a, the, the grad, wait a minute, she was equally impressive. She was a graduate third in her class from Savannah State College, eventually becoming a Georgia legislator and one of the first black women to run for public office in the state. Uh-huh. Then she goes in to talk about how her dad got people together, how he got them straight. He, she remember one time he was on the phone talking to a, a I don't know if it was a, 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 what do you call it, um, a vendor or he is or whatnot, or it could have been an employee, who knows? But he, he, she was saying he was saying fuck you and hung up the phone and stuff. She thought that was a boss move. <laughs> I'm like girl if you don't sit your ass down somewhere okay um then we go into talking about uh she gives us the aspect of when she's about 10 years old uh but well, Lauren was 10 years old when their dad died and she was 16 and how they went and saw him um in his final resting state in Duke University Hospital and how she had to take care of her door or her little sister because nobody else was looking at her sister and how she was acting out because she was tired so Portia said she laid on the floor and had her sister lay on top of her 
uh, to prevent her from being nasty on the floor. She took the the nastiness uh, so her uh, sister could get some rest. I'm like, okay, all right, Portia doing the big sister thing. But it just is what it is. Then it goes on to say, um, Portia, uh, uh, and her mom, her mom and dad met at the University of Georgia. So, um, I didn't, it didn't really say that her mom graduated from, uh, the University of Georgia. It said she was doing her undergrad studies there and her dad had enrolled in law school there. So, I don't know, but it seems like both parents were educational, post-secondary educational smart. Why they didn't have their daughters go to school, I have no idea. Why they didn't instill that in them, I have no idea. Okay, but um, I guess his cleaning company was doing real well because Portia said her mama eventually quit working for her dad at their chemical company. And became an assumed position of a total housewife. Alright. So Diane got a chance to do that. Uh, and um, then Portia goes into another scene. Where her dad, I'm guessing, is with uh, Lauren's mom at this time. Because he's insisting that both her and her brother... You know, hang out on their house every other weekend to try to get to know Miss Lisa and this, that, and the third. And um, he had another son by, I guess, his girlfriend. I think his name was Brenton or Brenton. I'm thinking, um, but evidently it must have been by some other woman, because he only seemed like he married two women. Portia's mom and Lauren's mom, and I guess he just had affairs out there, and probably more children we don't know about or Portia didn't talk about. Okay, but, uh, yeah. Um, but it, it's just pretty much crazy, uh, this going on. Because Portia was saying her mom got so upset. It was almost like Bernadine from Waiting to Excel scene where her mom just got sick of her dad cheating on her. And she was t tearing up $1,000 suits and, you know, just doing all kinds of crazy shit. And, um, Portia was saying this was when she was three years old. Okay, and I'm like, okay, all right, you can remember all of that. I'm like, did Diane just, just tell you this shit, girl? Did you, did you really know that's what's happening? Cause I'm telling you, I couldn't remember nothing. And I thought about that after reading this book. I said, I was trying to figure out, could I remember something at two and three years old? And I'm like, hell no. Because my mom said, I, I wouldn't give up my bottle uh, to, you know, I always used it for everything as far as, soda she would give me or juice or whatever because i ain't like milk my brother used to always take my milk from me uh take it from me from my bottle or whatever um but uh i couldn't remember very much it's like my mind wouldn't let me go that far and i can remember things at five six seven stuff like that but two and three years old and portia has idyllic memory Letting her know that her dad was cheating on her mom. And her mom was going around here cutting up thousand dollar suits. I'm like, um, you had to get that information from somewhere else. Because you being a two or three year old, you don't know how much them suits cost. You could care less really because it wasn't your clothes. You know what I'm saying? So you were saying these were thousand dollar suits. You had to get that from your mom and Diane, girl. You ain't fooling us. Okay. Um, then she goes in to talk about, um, uh, her mom had to quickly assume a position and, Somehow, uh, she started running a 24-hour a daycare center, which doesn't make sense. Because if you were two or three years old at the time and your mama started this business, how possibly could it have been that you was a gantor on the loan? Because we found that out in my last video that I, I had told my family about. So, that, that doesn't make sense, uh, Portia, what you're talking about. Oh, then you really should have had somebody to chronicleize your book because it, you're just going from th two to three year olds to sixteen year olds to when you're grown. And you it's just crazy. But um, what really got me was that she idolized somebody who basically tore up the family thread of a union. She loved her dad. She emulated her dad because she likes that same reception when she enters a room. She wants to look glamorous. She wants all eyes on her. 
uh she want to be dressed to the nines you know all that jazz going on and i'm like girl your mama taught you how to not do business and your daddy was out here acting like a hoe and you praising both of them i don't understand i don't understand and then she was saying that her mom never spoke bad of her dad she always uh would tell them when they go over to miss lisa house to be nice um to uh respect her and her home and just that and the third and tried to follow suit with doing that and you know at this time the dad was calling himself watching them and he was having Portia do all her homework make sure she had everything together because she didn't want to hear her mother's mouth and Portia was like okay daddy you know it just is what it is okay but then it goes on to say uh, she had to keep her father's secrets because if she didn't, she would be punished. And her, her, her father's secrets was basically him cheating on Miss Lisa, which was his second wife, Lauren's mother. And if she didn't, it would be consequences. So she dared not tell the truth to Miss Lisa anymore or any other girlfriends because she said i remember there was a time i was with my father when he went to his girlfriend's apartment i was around 10 years old and i didn't realize the rules of running around i didn't know that you could see things that weren't supposed to be repeated i mean i was raised in a household where we told one another everything or at least i thought we did being slow to dad's new rules, I had told Lisa what I had seen, which apparently I wasn't supposed to do. So on his next date with his girlfriend, instead of inviting me inside, my father made me wait in the car for hours. Okay? And the other son, um, I guess it was Brent from another uh, relationship. He was in there with his dad and he was checking on Portia by looking out the curtains, making sure she was okay. But he had her sitting there in a hot ass car for hours. Now, I'm like, Child Protective Services, where are you? <laughs> Child Protective Services, where are you? Because Jose Williams, um, Portia's dad was full of shit, okay? And he should have been reprimanded for that. And Portia was at the age to be able to tell her mom what was going on i mean she was 10 years old i know i told on my dad you know <laughs> he came to pick up me and my brother if he dropped us off anywhere suspicious that i didn't know about and it wasn't his family i told honey i told i sung it i sung it to the high heavens but you know my dad never really um did any of those crazy things he just wanted to be free he was a little hoe too he didn't want to take care of he paid no child support and um he was a preacher's kid yeah my granddad his dad it was a, a preacher so and i you know as i got older i told all of them what i felt about them i said how you gonna be in the pool pit preaching telling folk how to do right and do, and, and do things correctly uh and you didn't even take care of your grandkids if your dad if, if your son didn't take care of us you should have been taking care of us or making sure we had you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, once I got of age and I understood everything from everybody's perspective and how I saw things, shit, I told to everybody. And I felt good about it. I sure did. I should call it. I was like, let my truth speak and I shall be set free. That's what it was, people. That's, I was set free that day, honey. I got I got on everybody's asses that, that I felt had did me wrong. Cousins, grandmother, granddaddy, dad, child. Ooh, it was a mess but anyway i dealt with it and um I, you know I, I think i was better for it because i didn't let certain things that happened in my childhood happen in my daughter's childhood you know what i'm saying because i feel we in a generation curse um but i know how to not put things out there that i didn't like done to me you know what i'm saying and she goes around in this book talking about her dad um she, she said my father would lock me and my brothers in bathrooms and, and, and bedrooms and laundry rooms and the basement when we were acting out or making too much noise as children. And then she goes in to say the doors were never actually locked. But we understood our punishment was that we could not leave. One by one we were placed in separate rooms. So I'm like that's mental abuse right there. So why is Portia... Uh, idolizing someone who treated her definitely with mental abuse and she was saying they had to walk on eggshells 
because they didn't know if they were getting the fun dad or the strict dad. I'm like, nah, baby, you getting your crazy dad, all right? That needed to definitely been taught some things, okay? But I'm, um, you know, hurt people, hurt people, hurt people. So we never know what took place in his uh dad's uh on her dad's side of his family. But I'm pretty sure it had a lot to do with infidelity because if he was doing it, he learned it from somewhere. That means Miss Juanita was fooling with Jose Williams, his his dad, Miss, because he was out there doing the same thing that he done taught Portia how to do. Okay, meaning her grandfather taught her father how to be a cheat, and so Portia is looking at how her daddy did. So she had to be a cheat because we think about it, we really think about it now. Cordell, Cordell had a girlfriend before Portia. They, I think her name was Brandy. They said she came in and, and tore up that relationship. So she got the man. See what I'm saying? Not only that. Look what she did with um, Simon and Fallon's relationship. Whether it was true to, to the start or finish. I, we'll never know. But we know Fallon was married to Simon. And what she do? She was allegedly coming in now. Taking somebody else's husband and assuming a position. So you see what I'm saying? Her daddy taught her these traits. He taught her how to be a hoe. And she don't see what's going on. Because she loving both of her parents with her eyes wide open. How you say you, you can't see the forest for the trees? <laughs> Point exactly. Point exactly. Um, yeah, his name was her younger brother was named Brenton. So, yeah, that was from another uh, relationship. Because she says uh, when they had playtime over her dad's house, she said, so my brother, meaning the uh, brother she has with her mom, uh, her older brother, would spend each other weekend over my dad's house in Stone Mountain, which was about 30 minutes away from my mom's house at the time. We would run around with Lauren and my younger brother, Brenton, who had a different mother. And after he died, though, we stopped going over there and we never really got back together again. So all those connections he was trying to make, the wives or the girlfriends were trying to hear it. <laughs> they were like, fine, y'all stay over there, we stay over there and it's is what it is. Because we weren't supposed to be in this situation in the first place. So again, I blame Diane for constantly um, accepting the disrespect that Portia dad was putting on her with the infidelity I uh fought Diane not Diane but uh Lauren's mom Lisa for staying in the situation you know this man was creeping because you probably was creeping with him while he was still married to Portia mama so what goes around comes around which is a karmatic circle you know what I'm saying it either hits you or it hits your loved ones but it's gonna hit you where you feel that effect so to say that to say this y'all knew y'all had a dog i'm not y'all y'all knew y'all had a male hoe running around now why did y'all stay in relationships and have kids okay but both uh diane had two well with her you only had one miss lisa kudos to you you must have learned something uh from this situation it's horrible peril of events okay Portia dad was a womanizer. He was a cheater. He was a liar. And he was mentally abusive father to her that taught her how to lie and be deceitful. So she get it honestly. Just like I try to tell y'all. It comes from early childhood traumas on how a person is going to be viewed and how they're going to view themselves. So her dad messed her up. Her mom messed her up to where she don't know if she's coming and going. She can't have a lucrative business because she wasn't given the tools she didn't go to school she didn't get that post-secondary education to sit there and uh know how to run a business or take business courses at least you know and then she had a man who she loved to death treat women like they were sex objects or or nothing but a uh somewhere to get their release in meaning to just have sex with them and leave high and dry and knowing that it was all about him so she got her selfishness ways emotionally from her dad because she couldn't connect with nobody else she felt that she had to emulate, uh, emulate her dad be her dad be the showstopper of a room where wherever she's being presented in and that's basically how it went down 
she had no true uh people she could look up to uh, because like I said she adored her mother her mother put her in, fin in a sense financial bankruptcy and her dad emotionally uh, mentally destroyed her uh, and it's just a, a bad cycle but again Portia you can stop this you can stop being a part of the entertainment industry uh, and do something else if it's nothing but being behind the scenes and producing shows or helping produce shows or find a career that's more suited to who you think you want to be because right now you, you ain't dealing with your issues don't seem like your mama dealt with her issues don't seem like um miss lisa um what do you call it well i can't really talk too much about her because she ain't showing too much of her life uh but little skips and a little bips and little stuff like that uh, because she don't seem like she want anybody to find out any information on her. And I agree with her. Stay silent, baby. Stay silent. Stay out the war path. You're just trying to do a little bit because your daughter's part of a ratchet show. Even though, you know, we have sound, have seen some um, unpositive things about Lauren and her relationships. And that's probably because her dad did her wrong and probably did her the same way he did Portia by locking them up when he didn't want to hear from them. Or he didn't want to hear them making noise and that was his way of punishing them and sometimes Portia even said he forgot that they were there with him so I'm like damn was he a drunk too how you gonna not know you had got your kids over your house and you you, you you don't know where they at after a couple of hours that's the brutality right there mental brutality somebody should have been calling protective services and like I said, Diane knew and um, Miss Lisa knew. And for them to have raised their children in that type of environment that was toxic, shame on their behinds too. Shame on them. Shame on them. But that's all I got for chapter two, y'all. Okay? I'm just going to say that was uh, the section. Chapter two was teaching Portia how to be a hoe. And it was compliments of her dad. Because she don't know how to treat no man. Because the only man she saw was a man mistreating the people that she loved which was her mom and her stepmom so how can she learn back then because for Portia is 40 years old you go get you some help spiritual um mentally emotionally you have the money go sit down and talk with somebody about it all right that's all you have to do if you have to take medication take that too but be on one kill or uh, a one accord with your daughter so this stuff don't have to keep festering itself generation after generation after generation okay and how you oh child I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how you got hooked up with r kelly but i'm sure as i keep going on um i'll figure that one out too as well get, or draw my own perspectives because that whole legacy with the jose williams thing it's nothing but trash or you know like i said i had my own personal experiences with mr jose williams himself and i know I can speak my truth and this is what I experienced from knowing him for that little moment that we had that business transaction. Now Miss Liz, I think she's needing money for her dad's Jose Feed the Hungry organization and she wanna to try to keep checks coming in so she got a part of this hor horrific, horrific show. But I'm like, how dare you come on a show that of a show that of a niece that you didn't really care for when she was young in her formative years when you could have been doing something positive with her i mean damn you had kids near her damn age as well but you just chose to like throw that to the side but now she supposedly uh is a part of being almost married to a man who's supposedly be a millionaire now you want to uh, see if he could drop some coins some dollars some dinero in your uh dad's organization that you've been president ceo cfo uh for the longest you know since he passed and gave you those reins so you took up the reins after he died okay or you were assumed the position or whatever but yeah i could see only that you wanted to just be a part of this show to get some money for yourself and for your family and for the organization and you use portia to do so so that's why i said if portia even have a chance of coming back from that she got to cut a lot of people out of her life because they're toxic you know your stepmom was kind of toxic but i guess she liked you because you did tell her that she, her dad was cheating on her so i guess she gave you all a branch and she will always have a soft spot in her heart for you 
Because you didn't have to do it. I'm like, damn, did you tell your mama? Did you tell your mama? I'm pretty sure y'all had a good laugh about that, too. And mama, you ain't got to worry about he cheating on me, Lisa, too. <laughs> but the nerve of you trying to say you loved your daddy and he did. You and your brother. And, well, I don't know. She didn't really say anything about Lauren. She just seemed like she was talking about her two brothers and her. That her dad did, you know, bad, too. And then keeping you out in that hot-ass car. Child, please, I would, ooh, I would have been, like, talking to strangers, like, can I use your phone so I can uh, call my mom or call the police because I'm tired of my dad. You know what I'm saying? So that's how she get, uh, from what she was taught by what she saw her dad did to women, she kind of, um, what do you call it, enlisted that behavior into her own characteristics, and she do the way she do to men. So, hey, again, hurt people hurt people hurt people. But that's all I have for this particular video, guys. Glad y'all were here with me. Take it in small doses because you know it was a long segment. But I had to go and give y'all my perspective of trying to keep up with Portia's lies and, and the stuff that she's telling. And, and this book's supposed to be the truth. It's not fictional. So, you know, I don't know if she wants sympathy points or whatnot. But I do know at a certain age, you're supposed to get your help. Because there's too many PSAs out there, personal service announcements. And too much in information on mental abuse, domestic abuse, and all this kind of stuff. That she could take part of and arm herself with mm -hmm. those skills and resources to be a better person. And to teach it to her daughter. That this is unacceptable behavior. If you come across a man trying to teach you this way. Or a woman trying to treat you this way. Get the hell out. Don't get them no more energy. Just move on. Because it's a dead end. Okay. So. That's all I had guys. Like and love. You got to help more. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Of course. And um, like and share my videos. Thank you guys. Bye bye.